This disclaimer was copied without permission. Cheers, Quaffers, Cosmos, Wigger, Sibbers, and all other good people out there. Yeah, I'm uh, wearing my football shirt because, let's face it, here in Europe, it's football time. That's also why I'm having something fairly simple. A Chuborg raw, raw and unfiltered uh, organic pilsner. So, <clears throat> on uh, Saturday evening, uh, it was my son's idea that we watch football. I didn't really care originally because I feel like Danish football uh, went down the sewer when Morten Olsen became manager. But it would make a cosy evening uh, doing things together, if still involving looking at a screen. It's, it's still a shared screen. Organic lager, not Pilsner. Still don't know how to English properly. So we sat down to watch the football match Denmark against Finland. It is, by the way, the first time ever that Finland is participating in a major football tournament. Uh, so after the first pretty boring 42 minutes of the match, something really, really bad happens. Christian Eriksen collapses after a throw in. Now, there were no accidents. There was no drama. There were no Finnish players even near him when it happened and it quickly became apparent he might have collapsed due to a heart attack. Teammates circled around him to shield him from prying eyes. Yes, BBC, via play, N-E-N-T, I see you. While the National Danish Broadcasting Agency, DR, Denmark's Radio, took to the helicopter to show pictures from the stadium and buildings and parks near the stadium. Of course, to avoid making a sensation out of what more and more threatened to become a national tragedy. Now, Christian Eriksen was rushed to the hospital, the most advanced of which exist in Denmark. Luckily, it's only a few blocks away from the national stadium. So for an hour, not only Denmark, but a huge chunk of the football world held its breath, hoping for the best. Thanks to Ericsson's teammates, in particular Simon Kier, who performed first aid and the medical staff in stadium and in uh, Rieshospital. About one hour after his collapse, the news broke that he was awake and stabilized. So a bit of credit should also go to the stadium audience, the Finns and the Danes, taking turns shouting his name, the Finns shouting Ericsson, then the Danes replying with Christian, or maybe it was the other way around. Uh, the Finns thus winning the European Sportsmanship Championships very early in the tournament. But hey, no surprises there. All viewers will know that I am biased towards Finns, and experiences like these will only make me even more biased. I should note, of course, that I am biased towards Finns only in a positive way. I kind of expect, if not anything, then most of the things that come out of Finland and most of the things that Finns do to, well, be good, basically. So, three quarters of an hour after the relieving message uh, that Ericsson was okay, the game commenced and the Finns finished off the Danes zero to one. Yeah, we lost the match against a team that has never played in a uh, in a major tournament because we suck like that. Oh. So, not long time passed before a conspiracy theory surfaced. In Denmark, it was brought forth by my Menike and was continued later by her mother, Vibeke Menike. None of them, as far as I can understand, related to the Danish football star from the 80s. Michael Manninger, and of course, even if they were, it would be completely irrelevant. So, Wiebeke and Mai Manninger are notorious in the Danish conspiracy movement. Wiebeke Manninger is actually a trained physician, however, without a license to practice. I wonder why. She also has a PhD, so her words bear some weight, 
or at least they used to, um, why they don't do so much anymore uh, is ultimately a different story. Uh, her daughter, Mai Menigu, a jewelry designer and accomplice in conspiracy and woo, shared this Facebook post, which, as you can see, is in the language of gibberish, which sounds like boiling porridge with a potato in its mouth, or whatever. So um, here's a translation. Horrible thing about Christian Eriksen, and I think everyone is wondering what it could be. I wonder when he was vaccinated. Perhaps it's a side effect from the vaccine. It's nice that he's awake. Get well soon. Heart emoji. Update. Ericsson has completed his vaccination with Pfizer vaccine on May 31st, 2021, playing for Inter Milan. It is really terrifying. So much to unpack here, but let's just cut to the most despicable lie in this absolute train wreck of a diatribe. Ericsson is not vaccinated yet against Covid. Not with the Pfizer vaccine or any other vaccine for that matter. Least of all on May 31st. On his Instagram account. You can see him arriving in Denmark to participate in the European Championships on the 29th of May. And there's an image of him training with the national team on June 1st. And this might come as a shock to you, but Inter Milan are not flying their players to Denmark to get them vaccinated. Big surprise, huh? It appears that Mai Menigo was picking up the lie from a series of tweets that started circulating about the time of the incident. Credit for the following information goes to 101greatgoals.com. Now there's a tweet from Lubas Mottel, caught in a screenshot where he claims that the chief medic of Inter Milan had confirmed that Ericsson had received the Pfizer vaccine on May 31st. The account Legal Leaks further floats the claim, citing a different tweet from Lubus Mottel, where Mottel goes off on a diatribe about thousands of people dying from the Covid vaccine. Legal Leaks' claim is that the Covid vaccine has caused heart inflammation in Christian Ericsson. The account of Sportiva Italia, the radio station where the chief medic allegedly confirmed Ericsson had been vaccinated, denies the accusations. No recording of any programs from the radio has surfaced where these claims are made. Uh, the whole thing indeed seems to have been completely made up. Also, the account that Lubas Mossel quotes is a garbage account apparently only existing to spread lies about Covid. So even though all these lies were rejected very quickly, it wouldn't be over yet. DBU, the Danish Football Union, held a press conference at 3 o'clock on Sunday, reporting that Ericsson was still hospitalized, however also still awake and stable. After the press conference, Wiebeke Manninger chipped in with this little gem. DBU has now finished the press conference. Nothing about whether Christian Ericsson is vaccinated or not. The easiest, and if so the most correct, thing to do for DBU would have been to have stated if Christian Eriksen had not been vaccinated. Them not saying anything could be interpreted in many ways. I also wonder why the press refrained from asking. The population needs a clear answer, namely whether Christian Eriksen has been vaccinated against Covid-19 once or twice. She is furthering the conspiracies and planting completely uncredited and uncalled for uncertainties about the official statements from the DBU by emphasizing the things they were not talking about. Well, if they didn't talk about them, maybe, just maybe, it was because they were irrelevant. And what else didn't they talk about at the press conference? chemtrails, Jewish space lasers, the Mandela effect, the moon landing hoax and the flat earth? Oh, it is very suspicious that they didn't say anything about those things now, isn't it? But the conspiracy knots just can't let it go, can they? As the obsessive narcissists that they are, they have to shape anything that happens into a substantial part of their narrative. Because when there is a national tragedy, or at least a potential one, it's never about the victims. 
It wasn't about Christian Eriksen and whether he was okay or not at all when the Manicus, Mr. Mottle and the other conspiracy nuts were stirring up shit. It was about themselves, them promoting their own agendas of petty lies. And even if... Even if Christian Eriksen had had the vaccination, cardiac arrest is a rare but very well-known condition in top athletes. An article from 2014 estimates that between 1 in 40,000 and 1 in 80,000 top athletes under the age of 40 are struck by sudden cardiac death. Links to the two papers I've found on the subject in the description. And even if my Manica and any of the other complete wank spanners believed their own lie that Christian Eriksen had been vaccinated, there would be no evidence of a link between the cardiac arrest and the vaccine other than speculation. Anti-vaxxers will scrupulously exploit what is close to a national tragedy to spread their own narcissistic lies and conspiracies. They couldn't care less about the many people they hurt in the process. This Saturday, thousands if not millions of football fans all over Europe have to listen to these wank jobs spreading lies and conspiracies. But one thing is people's personal feelings. There is of course a much bigger and much more destructive dimension to this. By spreading speculative lies about the COVID vaccines, that they are dangerous and raise the risk of heart issues, anti-vaxxers dissuade a lot of people from getting vaccinated. And yes, sure, there have been some issues with the Johnson & Johnson and AstraZeneca vaccines resulting in them being taken off the market in some countries, including Denmark. However, issues like these have not been found in the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines as far as we can see by now. They are not only the most effective of the vaccines against Covid, they are also pretty darn safe. And that good reputation is what Wiebeke and Mai Menike, Lubus Mottel and all the other conspiracy mopheads are ruining. We cannot just leave them be and be content with the fact that they aren't that many. Their narrative is picking up. Some of them are prominent media personalities that people actually listen to, and they know how to spread a narrative effectively. They will be part of the reason why the pandemic will not be defeated as quickly as possible. Their reluctance to get vaccinated will mean that the way to herd immunity by mass vaccination will be longer, if not ending in a crash altogether. It is of course also the same people who oppose to mask wearing, social distancing and lockdown procedures while being so utterly dense that not only they bend light around them and time goes quicker when you're close to them, also they can't take in the fact that they are the ones constantly worsening the situation, thus constantly postponing the reopening of society. Not only are they a danger by spreading misinformation, by their carelessness, they also spread COVID and push the ending of the pandemic and lockdowns further and further away. Yeah, fuck them or something. Also, like and subscribe if you like the video, or dislike if you don't. Yeah. Let me hear your comments and share the video if you think it's worth it. Consider supporting me on Patreon if you like what I'm doing. And um, even if it can be difficult, when dealing with conspiracy morons, especially anti-vaxxers and covidiots, always remember to drink responsibly. And until next time. Cheers. All right, and uh, about some uh, UEFA tweets came out um, as this was all going down. Got a few comments about them as well. Breaking. UEFA has confirmed that Ericsson has been stabilized at the hospital. He's alive and fine. Thank you, Lord.
And also, what a fighter. Christian Eriksen is awake and stable. We will keep praying for him and his family. Now, um, I don't really want to be that atheist. And I will emphasize that if you want to pray and that makes you feel good and it works for you, then okay, I guess. You're definitely not ruining anything as such. Let's just keep it at that. But I don't see how thanking the Lord and praying uh, as an official statement from a football organization is going to do anything good. I mean, please keep that out of football. Let churches and religious people say that. I really can't see why uh, UEFA has to push that narrative uh, in any way whatsoever. How about saying something like, um, here's our hope that the medical staff will do their very best for Christian Eriksen and enormous thanks to the national teams of Finland and Denmark for handling the situation so professionally. Something like that. Chipped in with this little gem. DBL, DBL. Oh, good, great. I can't Danish anymore. I can't even Danish anymore. Well, I was saying it in English, so I can't English. And we all know that. DBU has now finished the press conference.